In this HVAC training video, I'm going to be going over some ideas in reference to charging liquid refrigerant into a running air conditioning system without slugging that compressor and damaging it. And so some of the procedures have changed now that we're using more T's and probes compared to the manifold gauge set. So I'm going to show you the fitting placement and some of the procedures and also a, a way to avoid having to buy an extra fitting and you can make it yourself even with the tools that you already have. Now, before we get into charging with T's and probes, I wanna show you what the procedures look like when charging with a compound manifold gauge set. And so you know, we only have these slightly connected onto the threads. That's why we're not reading any pressure here. But if the system were running, we would have our high pressure liquid over here, which would be displayed on our red gauge. And that would be a higher pressure than the bottle pressure at ambient temperature. And then over here will be your low pressure vapor. And that's gonna be displayed over here on this blue gauge. And that's gonna be lower in pressure than your bottle pressure. Now your bottle is gonna be connected over here on this yellow hose. And so because the bottle is inverted upside down, you're gonna have liquid in the bottom of the bottle. So your liquid's gonna go into this yellow hose right here. And then anytime that you open up this handle, it's going to connect your higher pressure liquid refrigerant to your lower pressure vapor refrigerant while this system is running. It's gonna allow refrigerant to exit the bottle and enter the system. Now, what we're not gonna do is we're not gonna open up the handle fully like that and just allow liquid to just come in and slug that, that vapor compressor because the pumping mechanism is gonna get broken essentially and it's also gonna wash any oil away from the surfaces inside the compressor. It's gonna damage it. So really what you only wanna do is open this handle up a little bit while you're monitoring your weight on your scale as you're charging refrigerant into the system and then you're gonna stop and then wait and then recheck the refrigerant charge again. And so that's what you would normally be doing. So you only wanna open this up a little bit to where maybe the pressure increases by maybe 15 PSI and then you're just gonna let it sit again. Now instead of that, where you're only opening this handle just a tiny, tiny bit, what you can do is you can add a vaporizer right here. And so on the manifold, we would typically just install this right here on this low pressure side. And so, just like that. Now, instead of this liquid vaporizer, you can install this version of a liquid vaporizer. And this is just a tiny, tiny little hole in the inside. It acts like a metering device. And essentially what's happening is you're gonna have your high pressure liquid entering and it's gonna go through the metering device. It's gonna flash it. It's gonna help to uh, phase change it into a vapor and you also have this long hose that it's going to be traveling in So it's basically saturated right here and by the time it comes into the compressor it mixes with that low pressure vapor It's almost all in vapor form if you're just adding a little at a time So this helps to protect the compressor uh, Some people instead of putting it over here will put it on the bottle On the bottle right over here Same thing with this. They'll put it right on the bottle, but I prefer to put that right here on the compound manifold gate set since this is the low pressure side, it's just gonna help flash it a little bit better. Now I also wanna point out, there's no way for you to, to attach this right here at the port because there is no valve core depressor to push in on the valve core. Same thing with this. The other thing is this is all, all one piece essentially. There's no swivel, so there's no way to have a liquid vaporizer mounted right here between the port and this hose. And so you're stuck with either right here or right here on the refrigerant bottle typically. So now that we discussed the manifold gauge set, let's move on to the T's and probes. If we measured a low refrigerant charge with our probes and T's, then we would just add our refrigerant with one hose connecting from the bottle over here to this T. And then this valve is the only valve that we would use in order to charge our liquid into the system. Now you'd have to be extremely careful with this valve because you are just pouring your liquid right into the system. It's not even going through an extra hose in order to help it vaporize or anything. It's just straight right into the T. Now we can't mount a vaporizer right here because there's no valve core depressor in the end and it's a single piece, it's not a swivel. So there's nothing we can do right here. Uh, we could put it right over here at the bottle. That's the only alternative that we could have between this hose and the, the port right here. Now it's still gonna be high pressure in here and it's gonna still have liquid. So it's gonna be saturated uh, but there's still a lot of liquid in here. It's going to definitely help though. It would be certainly better to have this over here at the port of the refrigerant bottle than nothing at all in order to charge your liquid into the system. Now, I'm gonna show you another idea I had, which is to basically mount a, a vaporizer right in the end of your hose fitting. And so we're gonna make a vaporizer right in the end of this valve core depressor right here. 
So I just want to show you what the valve core depressor looks like. There's a hole on both sides on the inner part right there on the inside of the rubber grommet. And what happens is that presses in on the valve core. And so that's how you gain access into the system. Say it just pushes that open. And so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to remove this to show you that. And this is not connected to any pressure or anything like that. So these are either screwed in or they're pressed in. And so there's two main types that I typically see in the various manufacturers' hoses. And so you can see that right there, there's the threading. And so on this one, this is a brass piece. So right here we have this upside down because we're getting ready to clean the inside and add some silver solder in there. But this is what this valve core depressor uh, looks like right side up. Now this flange here is to stop any silver solder from just flowing right through and then we're going to use a drill bit to clean the inside here. I'm not really drilling it down, I'm just trying to scrape the inside surfaces. And then we're going to use a little bit of flux here and we're going to put that down inside. And then we're going to take our torch and our silver solder You don't need a whole lot of silver solder either, just a little bit. You can just take a rag to clean that off. You can see the silver solder in there, and there it is on the end. I'm gonna go ahead and drill through it. You could use a pin like this and just put this head into the drill, or you can just use a 1 32nd drill bit. Also keep in mind that the teeth on newer drills might have a bigger hole, so I'm gonna actually use a older drill here. This one's able to hold that drill bit in place. <laughs> So there's the opening size, and you want to make sure to only use silver solder, not the waterline uh, solder that's lead-free. That's a lot harder. You also don't need a whole lot of solder in here, just a little tiny bit. Otherwise, it would be a little hard to drill through, but there it is. That's the whole size. So it's going to act like a metering device when you're allowing the liquid to go through that tiny little hole. Now, you may have a valve core depressor that looks like this instead, and this is just a push-in one. And this is brass coated, but it's actually aluminum. As you can see right here, I cleaned it off and cleaned the inside. And so for this one, you'd need a different product in order to uh, fill in that hole. And you could use AL822, and that's an aluminum braze rod. And so you just use a low temperature torch in order to fill that in, and you can just drill it out just as easy as the other one. And so these are the two main valve core depressors. This is a screw in version, and this is just a push in version. And so you're just gonna screw it right back in there when you're done, and you're ready to use it. So just make sure you have any of the loose shards and everything out all cleaned out, ready to go. Uh, just for your reference, this is a number 59 piston chamber, and you can see this is a 1 32nd inch drill bit, and there's, there's a little bit smaller of a hole that we put in this than a very small piston. And so this is essentially just like this other vaporizer right here. So like I mentioned, the only other option besides adding a vaporizer back here is to just take your time and meter this in. But now that we have our very small hole right here, uh, it's only going to allow a small amount of liquid into the system, and so it'll have a chance to flash before entering the compressor. I thought this was an interesting topic. Nobody's really been talking about how things and how procedures have changed now that we're moving from manifold gauge sets over to T's and probes as far as charging and how things differ a little bit. So thanks for bearing with me during this little arts and crafts time in order to uh, make your own liquid vaporizer on the end of the hose. Also, I just want to let you know we've been working very very hard on a new project that we're going to let everybody know about in early to mid-December. So make sure you're part of the updates list over at acservicetech.com so that you get notified when that comes out. If this video has helped you, make sure to check out our books that are available over at Amazon and also at acservicetech.com. So these really show you the procedures that we use in the field in order to do our jobs. And so a lot of other books may just refer to just theory and not show you the procedures. So that's what these are all about.